Hey, buddy, welcome back to Buying Time. Harry McCullough here. We're talking, uh, you know, as school started and, and Labor Day weekend is about to be upon us, uh, it's time to watch out uh, on the highways and byways for sure. And uh, the local law enforcement has set up a DUI checkpoint that will happen in this area to make sure everybody's safe on the highways. Travis Terrio, HPD police chief, is here. Talk a little bit about that and, and some other things that we can talk about as school starts and all that as well. Uh, the, it doesn't mean it's going to be on Labor Day, but they just checkpoints now just to, as as we change seasons, although this season seems like it's going to be with us for a while, this hot and muggy. But as things start changing, y'all decided that this is a good time to do that. Right, right. Well, and, and statistics have shown, you know, whenever you certain holidays come around or holidays in general, there's always an increase in um, alcohol c consumption. And. You know, what we want is a safe and a uh, safe parish for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, when our loved ones are commuting to and from church or, or from uh, the doctor's office or from school, we want to make sure everybody makes it home safe. And um, a as a result, in conjunction with uh, the Highway Safety Commission, um, who uh, supports us with grants and different things like that, we're going to be having a checkpoint tomorrow on uh, August 23rd. And uh, we, we announced it as it's required by law. But um, you know, we're not trying to hide it. We're telling you that we are going to be increasing our patrols for DWIs, and uh, we're going to be out there looking for anyone driving impaired. So the checkpoint will be on a Wednesday, the the, the 23rd. But but you you've increased patrols in general, and it's just holidays in general. It, it just you know it might be the last hurrah. It's not like it used to be, where the the Labor Day used to be like the last day of summer as you started school. And now they've already started school, but. But still, it's the last, it's any kind of holiday, people probably get gather a little bit, right? That's right, that's right. And it's it's all holidays, and uh, it comes in ways we'll increase our patrols, just, you know, make for a safer time. And um, look, the person that we're stopping, we probably may have just saved your life. Absolutely. And their life, too. That's right. In particular. That's what, yeah. that's what I so, mean. We may have just saved their life. Yeah. No, nobody needs to, to do that at any time, whether it's a holiday or not. But, but yeah, we certainly don't need to, and there's probably a higher propensity for people to be doing that during a holiday. Um, it, it, you know, anybody can, can go out and we want people to have a good time, but you don't get behind the wheel. Right, right. And, and also, you know, it's not just DWIs that we focus on this time of year. We have our kids coming back into school, and um, we put a public service announcement out letting everyone know that we were going to um, – have increased patrols in all of our school zones. We have more children this year walking to and from school. We have an increased to number. Change the rules, yeah. Yeah, we have an increased number of foot traffic going to and from school. We have increased our patrols, and um, our officers have been very proactive and um, taking it very serious to make sure these children make it to and from uh, school safely to the best of our ability. Um, we take the protection of these kids serious, and um, we just ask that everyone, uh, you know, follow the follow the speed limit in the school zone. If you can avoid the school zone, go around it. You know, if you don't feel like taking the time to slow down, right. but we need to be very patient. We know, um, look, we don't patrol that area, but I know that uh, South Terrebonne has a lot of traffic. They have an increased number of kids there. Uh, within the city limits as a result of the hurricane, we actually have more schools operating now inside the city. Um, than before the hurricane. So we have a lot more kids walking within the city. Right. And um, we're going to um, we're going to continue to uh, patrol. Them. Yeah, with a new uh, bus schedule, they were trying That's to right. do j just, you know, two rounds instead of three rounds to, to make it more efficient and to get more kids uh, there on time. It, they're, they're working out all the details of it. And it's all every school year, whether it's five times they go around every year, it's there's something, you know, it takes a little getting used to. But you said if you live in a certain distance close to the school, you either have to walk or ride your bike. So that's a lot more pedestrians on that. Those right. campuses. That's right. Now, now, when I when you pass the schools on, usually it says no handheld phones either. So that's, right. that's probably something you're looking for. And we're all, well. we're looking for seatbelts. We're looking for handheld devices. We're looking for speeding. You know, um, if you drinking and driving, obviously, Gosh. any any type of violation that can put a child or a pedestrian in danger. Yeah. Uh, well, as we go, we want to check in. Uh, last time you're here, yo, we're talking about uh, an issue that that our community had with, with fentanyl that was starting to get in the area. Are, are you making any headways on that or are we um, anything going on with that? 
our our narcotics agents between our office and the sheriff's department, the state and federal agencies, they've been working diligently um, to try and at least curb what's occurring in Homa. And I really have to commend the work that they've been doing. I do feel like we are making some headway. Um, it's you know it's pretty disheartening whenever you make an arrest and then boom, you know you, you still you may have an overdose or, yeah. or you get learned of other things. But it's not gonna. It's not going to suppress us. We're going to continue to investigate proactively and uh, push the fight. You know, we had our canines on here not long ago. Really a uh, good group of uh, officers and, uh, you know, can't ask for a better uh, um, group of canines that we have. Um, How many canines you have? We, we've got four. Four. Uh-huh. And uh, look, and not to take away from our patrolmen. Mm-hmm. Our, the the right. patrolmen and our investigators, um, you know, the uniform patrol and our investigators within our detective bureau. I'm proud of all the work that uh, sure. our officers have been doing at the police department. Um, I can't take credit for the work they do, right. but um, they uh, they truly do a great job in serving our community. Uh, do you see any of those numbers of overdoses? That, or is it staying the same, going down, raising? Or how are we seeing those numbers? Um, it looks like um, we're kind of maintaining. It's, uh, it's definitely not where we were at. Um, months ago right but um we we still a problem yeah so i mean you still want to look out and that's right and right we, we still uh gotta make sure that, that those things and like I say canines sniffing out and and, yeah. and patrolmen right. that that know how when to use them is the right so well uh, continue to fight we appreciate it thank you all right that's travis terrio with the hpd we'll be right back with more body time right after this 